rapper Sean Diddy Combs Holmes were raided in connection to a federal human trafficking investigation. His attorney is now accusing the government of a witch hunt. Ever since P. Diddy became a music exec in 1993, he has been at the top of every scandal in the industry. He was accused of being behind Tupac's death, and recently, a barrage of lawsuits have come against him, accusing him of being a sexual predator. But despite all these accusations, P. Diddy always seems to come out on the other side unscathed. Apparently, there's a man that makes all of his problems go away. But who is this man? Why does he always help P. Diddy? And what's in it for him? It all started with Cassie. If you've been following any news relating to P. Diddy since 2023, then you must have heard of Cassie Ventura. She was the music exec's lover for over a decade, but their relationship was marked with abuse and threats to her life. Cassie started dating Diddy when she was 19, but she was never interested in the relationship. Diddy used all the people that he had placed around her when she joined his record label to coerce her and force her into a relationship with him. Their relationship became sexual after he loaded her body with drugs on his yacht when he tricked her into going to a fake party with him. Throughout Cassie's time with Diddy, she suffered physical abuse because he had terrible anger issues. Apart from the physical abuse, he also made her have sex with sex workers, which he recorded. Diddy would make Cassie hold his gun while they were out which was his way of letting her know that he was dangerous. After he had abused her, Diddy would then shower Cassie with so many gifts to make her feel like he was madly in love with her and could not control his temper. What? You want my, what? What you got to say now? What you got to say now? You ain't got shit to say. One fact about their relationship that you should keep in mind is that Diddy always threatened to ruin Cassie's career if she ever left him. He also liked to throw in the fact that he has a guy who, with one phone call, could make her disappear, which we will get into in a minute. Even when he wasn't dealing with her, he wanted complete control over her life. Although Cassie is now married to another man, she's still living with the trauma from dating Diddy. When she took the case to court, Diddy's lawyers denied Diddy abusing Cassie. However, they decided to settle the matter outside of court. Even if they claimed that settling with Cassie wasn't an admission of guilt, it was evident that Diddy had a lot to hide, which is why he didn't want the case to spend so much time in the public eye, and he succeeded for a short while. Lil Rod Steps Forward With More Claims when Diddy and Cassie's case was already getting covered by other news, Lil Rob reopened old wounds and made everybody focus on Diddy again. Lil Rod was first exposed to music in church where he learned to play instruments. His interest in music led him to pursue a career as a music producer. Some of you may know me or may not. I'm a music producer who's a writer and musician. I've been working on an album um, I took a year off straight working on this album. That album is the Love album, Off the Grid by Diddy. Grammy nominated right now as we speak. Um, I should be um, celebrating, but the truth is I'm not. When you're still up and coming in the industry, getting requests from big names like Diddy to work on their albums can seem like a great opportunity. Little did he know, accepting Diddy's request to work on the Love album in 2022 would lead to years of mental instability. But the truth is they're not playing fair. They, they hit me on below the belt on so many situations. Just 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 dealing with this It's the contract that they give me and the offer that they gave me was just disgusting. The, 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 the producer fee pennies. And on top of that, these guys are trying to steal my publishing. In 2022, Diddy invited Lil Rod to stay in his house and work on his album. For over nine months, Lil Rod stayed in Diddy's mansion, and that was when he saw the dark side to Diddy. Rod claimed that Diddy always wanted to be recorded, which led to Lil Rod having hours of footage of Diddy and the illegal activities that go down in his house. Lil Rod revealed that Diddy had all kinds of illegal drugs and guns being distributed in his house. Even Diddy's workers, like his chief of staff, Christina Karam, helped in the distribution of these drugs. Diddy wasn't just using these drugs to host parties in his house. He was also bringing in underage girls and lacing their drinks with these drugs so he could have his way with them. When he got tired of underage girls, Diddy would focus his attention on Lil Rod and attempt to change his sexuality. Based on the court documents, Lil Rod claimed that Diddy occasionally groped his buttocks and genitals. 
when he complained to Christina Karan, also known as KK, she told him that it was Diddy's way of showing affection. Diddy also tried other tactics to get into Little Rod's undies, like walking around the house naked. Even though KK said it was his way of showing affection, she would always leave the house once the madness started. Diddy knew that Lil Rod looked up to Stevie J, another record producer, so he used his access to Stevie to try to get Lil Rod on his bed. Diddy showed Lil Rod a video of Stevie J having sex with a Caucasian male and claimed that gay sex was a normal thing in the industry, and everyone did it. When Lil Rod still wouldn't give in to the demands, P. Diddy tried to use Young Miami's cousin to get to him. During a Thanksgiving dinner, Young Miami's cousin approached Lil Rod in the bathroom and started performing oral sex on him. He pushed her aside and tried to make his escape. When she saw her plan was failing, she got naked and straddled him right in front of Diddy and his staff. Lil Rod believed that Diddy was the one that sent her on that journey to sexually assault him. Diddy tried to use every tactic possible to get Lil Rod in bed. He promised to make him Grammy Producer of the Year, offered him a $20 million house, and a lot of cash gifts just to have sex with him. As Lil Rod kept refusing Diddy's gifts, Diddy would resort to threats, and that was when he had revealed that he had a man who could make all his problems disappear. The man was Fahim Muhammad. Who is Fahim Muhammad? Fahim Muhammad is a Hollywood professional security guard who first worked as head of security for Michael Jackson before finding gainful employment under P. Diddy. He was like the only person that could keep everyone's mouth shut when it came to P. Diddy, and there are allegations of him doing the same for the Michael Jackson case. After MJ's death, Fahim Muhammad and another of the pop star staff teamed up to start a real estate empire. Their business was successful right from its first year, but Fahim Muhammad continued to work as head of security for P. Diddy. According to Lil Rod, all of Diddy's staff reported to Fahim whenever there was something wrong. In 2022, Diddy and his son, Justin Combs, had gotten into an altercation with Justin's friend, referred to as G. They were at a studio and took the fight to the bathroom. After arguing for a hot second, shots were fired, after which Diddy and his son stepped out of the bathroom and left G on the floor with gunshot wounds. All of the staff at the studio just kept looking at G without offering help until Lil Rod stepped in. G was rushed to the hospital, while Diddy gave instructions to the staff to lie about his involvement in the shooting. He told them to say that G was shot outside the studio by an unknown gunman. Fahim Muhammad took charge of the situation because he had contacts in the LAPD. The cops investigated the actual bathroom that had blood stains on the floor but instead reported that the shooting had taken place outside the studio. It was obvious that Fahim was a well-connected man. P. Diddy had so much confidence in him that he feels like he can commit any crime and no harm will come to him. Staff always had to report to Fahim, and he was the only one they would listen to whenever things went bad around Diddy. What exactly was he gaining from Diddy that would make him choose being a security chief over a CEO? We all know that MJ had a history of drug use, and this was portrayed in the media as the reason behind his death. But this could have very well been a blanket thrown over everyone's eyes by Muhammad. He seemed to be the go-to guy for keeping things hush-hush in the industry. Then we fast forward to the present time, where we have parallels being drawn between MJ and Diddy. The patterns suggest that Diddy was aware of his work on the MJ case and knew that he needed this man to contain all of his controversial doings. Beyond the obvious and initial role of Chief of Security, it seems like there is a more secretive position that was created for him. Moreover, the recurrent theme of Fahim Muhammad's allegiance to artists with checkered pasts prompts speculation about the nature of his agreements. Is there a pact of silence, an unspoken understanding that transcends his normal duties? Reflecting on Fahim Muhammad's journey from Michael Jackson's Neverland to the whirlwind realm of P. Diddy, one thing is evident. Behind his role as chief of security, there's a story filled with secrets and discretion. It makes me wonder what else does this man know about? I was unable to find when he was initially hired for the role, but was he involved in B.I.G.'s death? What other cover-ups has this man been involved with? Michael Jackson had a history of drug use, which allegedly led to his death. But it was a well-kept secret that would not have been possible if Fahim Muhammad wasn't working hard to keep everything quiet. We must believe this is why Diddy brought him into his organizations, and it seems like he's doing exactly what Diddy needs to keep him out of prison. 
Before execs like P. Diddy would have faith in any of their staff, it would mean that they have gone through hard times with them. For security guard like Fahim Mohammed, P. Diddy seems to have a lot of faith in him, which makes everything more questionable. We are dying to hear what you guys think about this entire situation. Leave us a comment and let us know your take. Do you think Diddy's cover-up boy will slip up, opening up years of prison time? Or will he keep Diddy safe and sound in his mansion of drugs and sex parties? If you've enjoyed this one, let us know by hitting the thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to the channel for more news and scandals in the world of hip-hop. Thanks for watching. We will see you in the next one.